Hi everybody, it's Geordie from Geordie's Cards. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am creating a couple of little um, reveal wheel cards using some gorgeous Lawn Fawn products today. And these are products that I haven't used before, so I was excited to get them out. So to start with, I've got my reveal wheel square add-on. Uh, so I'm just using the kind of outside part for that. I am using the original reveal wheel for the circle um, parts to make the card spin. I'm using the reveal wheel circle add-on and the circle frames add-on for the um, kind of window and the flower. And I'm using the Lawn Fawn Little Flowers die set to create my pot and the stem for my flower to stand on. I'm also using these little faces which come from the Rawsome stamp set. Now, Lawn Fawn have a load of stamp sets with faces, but I chose these because they were about the right size. So off camera, I've gone ahead and die cut everything out. I used the Dandy Day paper pad to cut my kind of background. So I cut some from green and then um, I'm making two cards. So one from um, bl a brighter blue and one from a kind of lighter yellow. Then I cut the pots from some coloured cardstock and everything else was from Lawn Fawn 110 pound white cardstock. I've got two of everything and just made sure that I had cut everything out that I needed before I got started. So I'm using my Copic markers to colour in my flowers and my leaves and stems. I'm using YG45 and YG41 for my green. Um, I'm not too worried about this little part here because you are literally only going to see a tiny tiny part of it by the time I've attached it all together so um, I kind of just wanted to you know give it a bit of color but I wasn't too worried about it um, so I'm just adding or starting out with my lightest color which is unusual for me but because I'm just coloring these in I wanted to add a base color first and then I'm just adding a little bit of shadow. Now for, for these parts, these stem parts, you're literally only gonna see a tiny bit of it. So I'm just adding a little bit of shadow to that. And I'm going in a little bit more detailed with the leaves, adding some shading to the center and kind of using some flicking motions to um, create a bit of texture. And I will go back and forth a couple of times with my markers to get this blend um, nice and even. Um, but do remember that these kind of dry back a bit as well, so they won't be quite so dark by the time they've all dried. But just to add a little bit of texture and interest to my, um, my little leaves here. And I really like these little green colours. They're quite, um, I don't know, they're kind of soft, but they're nice and bright as well. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I like them. Okay, RV29, RV25 and RV23 are for these really, really bright pink colours. And again, I'm starting by um, colouring the whole um, flower in um, with my lightest marker. And then I'm going to use my darkest marker to add some um, shadow and shading and some kind of texture to it. So around the kind of center and then um, into each petal, just with a few little flicks into the center of each petal. And once I've done that, I'll take my mid-tone marker, which is my RV25, and I'm just going to blend that darker marker out a little bit so it's not quite so stark against the lighter pink. And just go around and do exactly the same thing for each little petal. And then to finish off, I'll take my lightest marker again and go ahead and kind of blend everything out. And it just kind of, um, as I say, adds a bit of texture and interest um, to the flower so it's not quite so plain and boring if you just did it one color. Um, and I kind of like the way it turned out. For my other flower, I'm going in with some lighter um, pink markers. So I've got R85, R83 and R81. These are kind of a softer um, pink, more like a rose pink, I suppose. Um, and this one will go on my kind of more pastel um, colored background. So I wanted the bright one for the, um, the kind of brighter blue and green um, background that I'm gonna use. And this kind of lighter color for the lighter yellow and green background that I'm planning on using. So I just wanted my colors to kind of match the, um, the colored paper that I was using to some degree anyway, not, not match it, but kind of tone in with that, I suppose, would be the better way of describing it. 
So again, I'm just doing exactly the same thing as I did on the first flower. Started out by coloring over the whole thing with my lightest marker. Used my darkest to add some shadow and some texture and detail. And then blending that out with my mid-tone and then I'll go back in with my lightest marker and just smooth everything out. Um, just going over it fairly roughly. I'm not being too precise about it. Um, I kind of want it to look like it's got some, some texture to it. So there we go, done. So now I've got my background pieces and I'm gonna start assembling things together. So I've got my little, um, I've got my new lawn fawn, it's not the little one, it's the jumbo one, <laughs> lawn fawn glue tube, which I'm gonna use today. So I start by attaching my flowers to the little stems. So I'm just using um, that kind of large circle piece at the top of the stem to glue it onto my flowers. And then I'm gonna place them onto my pattern paper over the um, hole for the reveal wheel. And I'm gonna glue that down. So I'm just literally putting glue around the outside of the flowers and not on the stems because I don't want to glue the stems down just yet. So I'm just doing that for both of them, making sure that they're centered properly and um, that I'm happy with the placement. And then I'm gonna bring in the grass pieces that I have cut. So what I did for these grass pieces was I cut um, the, I, I used the square reveal wheel add-on to cut around the edge. So they've got the stitching detail and then just used a grass border stencil, uh, sorry, not stencil, die to um, cut the grass. And I'm just repeating exactly the same thing on the other card. So these cards are gonna be assembled exactly the same way. They're just slightly different because of the colors of pattern paper and the Copic markers that I've used. So once I was happy with the placement of that one, I brought in the grass and again, attached that down. And I'm just making sure, I did actually end up gluing down the uh, stem initially here and I realized pretty quickly what I'd done. Just making sure that the stem pops out and um, is not attached down yet because I need to put that into my little pl plant pot, which I'm going to add on here in a minute. So once those were done, I brought my plant pots over and I started to attach them and then realized, hold on a second, I actually wanted to um, Copic color these and add a little bit of detail to these guys as well. So I've brought them over and I'm pulling out my Copic markers. So I'm using E99 and 97 for this kind of terracotta colored pot. Um, these pieces of cardstock were just scraps. I keep a scrap um, kind of box beside my desk, which I put all my cardstock scraps into. And anytime I need um, just little pieces, I go through it and see if I can find a color that will work. And so today I use this kind of orangey color and this kind of turquoise color. So just, as I say, just using my Copex to add some um, kind of shading to my plant pots. I don't, I'm not attempting to make them look overly realistic, but just um, to add a little bit of depth, depth and dimension and make them look a bit more rounded so that they're not quite so flat. So that was the idea. For my um, kind of turquoisey teal color, I used BG15, BG13, and I did bring in some BG11 in the end as well. And I was a little bit worried initially about um, these colors. I wasn't sure if they were um, what I wanted. I did try and match the colors to the cardstock as much as possible, but I kind of felt this one was a little bit dark, which is why I bought that BG11 in too. Um, just to kind of try and smooth out the color a little bit so it wasn't quite so um, dramatic. <laughs> I guess that's the word I'm looking for anyway. So that's what I did. I'm so sorry, I've got noises going on everywhere here today. Tried to find a nice quiet time to, to record this and <laughs> it just never happens, does it? Um, so that's what I'm doing with these. Just trying to add a little bit of kind of um, a look of a three-dimensional shape to them. So once I'm happy with all of this, I will go ahead and stick the kind of lips of the pot that I've got there with the, um, onto the actual pot base. Does that make sense? <laughs> You'll see what I mean in a minute. So um, this, I kind of like the, the added dimension that this gives. And you could, of course, pop this up on foam tape. I didn't, I just kept it all flat. 
Um, so I'm just using my liquid glue to attach that on there. So it just, just as I say, just creates a little bit of dimension. And then obviously these little plant pots have these slits in them as well. So you can pop your plants into the pot to make it look, look like they're actually growing up out of the pot, which I think is a really, really lovely detail for these. Um, makes them look quite, um, quite realistic, quite sweet. So once that is complete, it is time to attach them on to my um, kind of bases. So I'm sliding the plant pots onto the stems of my flowers. And you can see here what I meant about not being able to see much of the stem. And now I'm just using my liquid glue to attach the stem onto the plant pot. So I've just put some glue onto the stem of the plant and I'm gonna stick that down. And then I'm going to attach glue to the back of the plant pot and pop that down on top of my card base. I hope this is making sense today. So just making sure that everything has adhered down nicely and nice and firm. So doing the same with it, exactly the same with the other one. So popping my plant pot onto my stem, gluing the stem onto the plant pot first. Um, you probably don't need to do this step, but I wanted to make sure it was all nice and centered and I thought that was the easiest way of doing it. And then once I was happy with the placement, I added some glue to the back of the plant pot and then just attached that down onto the card base. And that was that part complete. And they're already looking quite cute. So I just um, got the little the leaves that I had co colored previously and I'm just attaching them inside. So they just kind of just pop out of the plant pot um, attached onto the stem. And again, just using my liquid glue for that. And I'm just using my tweezers to clean up any little excess part, pieces of glue that might kind of seep out. Um, the glue dries clear, so it's not an issue if it does seep out. So I'm gonna put those parts aside and I've pulled out the kind of um, circle piece that is at the actual kind of reveal wheel, if you like. And I've colored these with my Copic markers. So I used Y13 and Y23. Um, so I literally just used one colour and just gave it one coat. Um, I'm not too worried if it's a little bit patchy because I actually kind of like the way that gives it a bit of texture. And this is going to be the um, kind of the flower centres, if you like. So I've used the reveal wheel template, the circle template, which I must say is really handy. And I've just stacked that on with some low tack tape onto my circles so that I could stamp out the little faces, which I've done for both of them. And now I'm using some R20 marker to add some little cheeks. Um, in this raw sim stamp set, there are some little cheeks that you can stamp on, but I just thought for the ease and for time, it was much easier just to pull out my Copic marker and do it. So now it's time to kind of assemble this together. So again, I take that reveal wheel template and I've got a mini brad. I'm popping it through the little circle piece and then through the reveal wheel and then through the template. So it comes up from the back um, to the front and I'm lining up my template, make sure it's in place. And then I'm just gonna add some little foam squares to that very little circle on, on the back. Just three is all you need. And then I'm gonna peel off the backing paper from those and I'm gonna pull over my kind of um, card Front, and I'm going to line everything up so that my I can just use the, the reveal wheel template to um, make sure everything is lined up. And then I'm going to bring that white kind of backing piece in and I'm going to kind of make sure everything's lined up and stick it down so that my three little um, foam squares attach to that back piece. And I'm just going to do exactly the same with my second card. So up through that little circle, through the reveal wheel, through the template, line everything up. So I move my template so that it's in the right spot. Add the foam squares to the back of the smallest circle. Make sure they're not touching the brad just around the outside. And as I say, you only need three. Then I'm gonna take my card front, line it up so that I can't see the um, template through the holes and then line that on, up onto the backing piece of card. And then it's all set. And it's so easy to use if you've got the templates. Um, I find them so much easier now to make. I never used to use the templates, but I've got them now and I use them all the time. So for my sentence, sorry, sentiment, 
I'm using the birthday before and after stamp set, which has this gorgeous happy birthday sentiment. And I'm just stamping that right at the very top above the flower and in exactly the same position for both cards. And I'm using my Versamark, sorry, Versafine Onyx Black Ink to stamp these sentiments out. Okay, so now I can attach everything down. So I'm using some larger foam squares in all four corners. And then I'm going to use some of the smaller ones just to go on either side of those large ones. And that's kind of all of the um, adhesive that I'm going to use. Now, you need to be careful that you do not put any adhesive so that it's touching the reveal wheel because that will hinder the movement of the wheel and stop it from working. So you just want it to go around the outside. And as I say, um, normally I'm quite heavy handed with adhesive, but for these, you don't need a huge amount. Everything kind of stays together quite nicely anyway. And these um, foam squares are, are just so easy to use. So once I've taken the backing off the foam squares, I just line up the front with the back and there we go. It's all set and it's all working nicely. Just do the same with the other one, pop it down on top. And for this one, I did not line it up properly. <laughs> So I'm carefully peeling it up off the, uh, the, the foam squares, couldn't get my words out then. And I'm just gonna line it up again and make sure it's all okay and all in the right spot and press down and hey presto, it works. And there we go, you can kind of see it can't, can't resist kind of having a little play. Um, so card fronts are done, now I just need my card bases. So I've cut these, these are four inch square card bases and I've used the Reveal Wheel Sentiment Set to stamp out that little arrow that says, Turn Me. And then this is the before and afters, sorry, the garden before and afters, which has a little sentiment that says, Hope Your Day Blooms With Happiness. And then a little flower in a pot, which looks quite similar to the flower that I've used on the front of the card. So I stamped that inside using my VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. And now I'm just using my Lawn Fawn Liquid Adhesive again, just to adhere the card base onto the card front or the card front onto the card base and that's it card done and I can't tell you guys how happy I am with these little cards they turned out so so cute and actually didn't take that long to make there was a lot of die cutting um but definitely doing assembly line die cutting worked really really well and you could probably um push out quite a few of these in quite a short space of time and I just think they're really, really cute and would definitely make somebody's day. So let me know what you think. I'm not sure which is my favourite. Can't decide. Um, tell me what you thought in the comments below. Please do give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And please do subscribe to my channel. I would love to see you come back again. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye.